Welcome to the Dying Light Any% speedrunning guide. In this part we will cover the first main mission called Awakening. It's a fairly short mission, however it's pretty saturated with different tricks and skips. So let's jump into the game and see what it has to offer. So first of all we need a fresh save file. Let's delete this one. Let's start. We will start with story mode. I've mentioned in general tricks and moment that we'll switch later on to nightmare mode. It's not now. We start the game from the story mode, which is the easiest difficulty available for us. And skip the initial cutscene. We don't care about watching it anyway. Timing, st timing starts at this loading screen, not before. And after we press spacebar, we can start the timer as well. The game greets us with unskippable cutscene, which is roughly 33 seconds long or less. So at the start, you can just sit back, relax, and listen to this amazing dialogue. When we approach about the end of this cutscene, you can start holding W. You can uh, you can run at this point, so just walk forward and try to reach this door as fast as possible. Which will start another unskippable cutscene. Another 30 seconds approximately. We should end it by the 101 minute mark. Another important part. In this section is uh, when you're strafing, you are actually slower than when you are walking straight forward or straight backwards. So, because of this, I'll just press W and will cut corner using only my mouse instead of winding up my character with strafe buttons. Just uh, walk casually towards the only available way for you. Listen to those dialogues. Then uh, the game asks you to ask you to get up by one four. Uh, you can skip part of this hallway by jumping over the railings uh, somewhere about the level of this door. When you reach it you can just jump over. It saves you a couple of half a second, maybe even a second. Go to this green door and then game quest asks you to interact with this door. When I will press F, it will start an unskippable uh, cutscene, which we will skip by holding spacebar. Uh, which also means, if this is a, if this is a skippable cutscene, we will get a black screen animation after skipping it. So we need to find out what is the best way to move during this black screen section. Uh, next quest, next quest will require us to move out of this room. So we need to find out. The trajectory, how we will move. Uh, after skipping cutscene, the game will put us in somewhat like this position and this camera angle. So when we skip cutscene, we will start holding left or E A button and mission F to uh, mission spacebar to jump on this table. Something like this. By the time we will jump on this table, we will start seeing the game so we can switch to W again because safe walking is slower and walk out of this room. So let's try it. Press F, skip cutscene, start holding left, smash spacebar, turn left and start walking forward. Next quest is to take elevator down to the 13th floor, which we obviously won't take because uh, as soon as we interact with elevator it will start a pretty long can skip a walk scene, which is obviously not a good thing in a speedrun. Moreover, uh, as soon as we touch this somewhere along this line, it will start an unskippable dialogue with this guy. And the worst part in this dialogue is that you cannot move while it's not completed. The old strat uh, was to touch this trigger and try to move back as much as possible. The new strat allows you to partially skip this dialogue by uh, falling down out of bounds to the 13th floor. So uh, previously you had to listen for this dialogue and fall to the 13th floor. Now you can start the dialogue and fall to the 13th floor while you're listening to it. So I will just quit out to 
reset my position so it will be more like after skipping cutscene. Obviously you won't have to do it in a speedrun, I'm just uh, explaining what you have to do with the game quest. So let's let's imagine you just skipped the cutscene, you jump on this table, walked outside the room, then instead of going left you go straight to the right and you want to jump somewhere near, uh, near this plank. So you want this plank to be at the center of your screen, more or less. When you jump like this, uh, make one step to the right and turn to this wall. So we have somewhere a particular angle to it. Uh, or as a visual cue, you can try to align yourself with this big stain. So uh, we would try to jump and clip outside, out of bounds. Uh, but before clipping, I'll try to explain how clipping in general works in this game. So most of the time we will clip by getting close to the wall, looking perpendicularly to it and then jumping inside the wall. But also the second important part is your camera angle. Uh, because your camera position slightly modifies your collision box or collision cylinder or whatever it is, uh, moving your camera is also crucial in clipping through the walls. In this particular case, after you jump, you want to look down and you want to look to the left. So this will slightly push you outside to this wall and it will increase your chances of successful clipping out of bounds. So let's try to put it all together. Let's jump like this. It doesn't seem as a close enough, but we will try it anyway. Look at the stain, jump, look down, look left. It was still enough. We got out of bounds. We can walk outside the game world. Uh, also, if you want to practice this clip, you can just clip inside here by jumping over this bed. And practice it. Let's try it once more. Look at the stain, jump, look down, look left. Pretty easy, but sometimes it may screw you over in a speedrun. So uh, if you want to make it first try, uh, you should really practice this by jumping like this. Sometimes if you jump way too close to this side, you won't be able to do a sidestep. This might not work. It's It still worked though. It was kind of lucky, but in a speedrun, um, when you, you do it more quickly, this is not the best setup. So, if you want to be safe, jump like this, one step right, walk down, walk left. It's about clipping through this wall. So, what you have to do next is to jump on this ceiling, jump then on this ceiling, and walk I want this hallway. Uh, pay attention to this cone, you want to get somewhere near this wall and walk over it. You will fall on the elevator which just appears in front of you. Then when I look in like this, uh, you may see that there is a black rectangle become invisible. So you want to end on it, so just move forward once more. Uh, and you can see this is the guy we have to talk with. There is a checkpoint visible to us. And what we have to do now? Uh, now we have to jump and clip slightly inside the game world so we can touch the trigger which will start the dialogue and then we will try to fall to the 13th floor by immediately jumping back and climbing this wedge then releasing it climbing second wedge and releasing it as well because uh, we don't want to die so we need to climb those grab those two wedges otherwise uh, we will die to fall damage with it which is obviously not what we want to have uh, Technically, uh, even if you die and you spend a big chunk of listening to this dialogue, uh, it actually may be good because you might touch the trigger just for enough time to get respawned on the city in four. But it's pretty risky and mm, pretty much if you fall to your death here, uh, you will you'll suffer a huge time loss, it just will be better to restart all over because you know, it's not that far in the game. So, how to do it more or less consistently without clipping inside, because uh, there is a possibility that you get sucked inside in bounds 
and basically all, all you're working around was for nothing because you have to walk around once more, clip outside once again and do all this stuff all over again. So when staying somewhere around this door, aligned with the edge of this door on this black rectangle, aim at this pipe, walk towards it and jump. As soon as you start hearing the dialogue or you see uh, subtitle, subtitles, jump back and try to grab the switch. So let's try it. We start the dialogue, we grab the wedge, fall down, grab second wedge, fall down. We are on the 13th floor, we cannot walk because uh, this dialogue is still playing, now the dialogue has ended, we can walk, moreover we can even run. However, you might notice that I'm walking right on air, I cannot clip and bounce, which I have to. So how do we clip inside, back into the game world? Uh, there is actually, we are staying on uh, an invisible wire on top of this 13 floor. I don't know what's the reasoning for it, maybe it's just for speedrunners, so they won't die from fall damage. Uh, but uh, to clip inside you have to run down from this invisible wire to the actual ceiling of this 13 floor. To do this, just uh, run towards the edge of this room, and as, you, as soon as you start falling, uh, make a sharp turn to the right or to the left, depends on whatever direction you are taking. I'm usually walk walking like this and turning to the right. And try to end on the ceiling of this floor. Like this. Now we are on the ceiling, uh, we can actually fall outside and fall down. We, we will use it to clip inside, so run along this hallway and clip through this wall. Now the quest changes, uh, game requires us to open the door, kill the zombie, uh, also we, we now have a weapon without uh, picking it up, it just gave it to us, it was given to us automatically, which is fine, but it's not needed, luckily, uh, because for some reason, uh, even though this zombie has 1 HP, which should be insta-killable by just breathing on it, uh, sometimes when you're trying to punch it with a pipe or trying to punch it with a leg, it just folds down without taking any damage. So to make things more consistent, you can just run into it by sprinting. So open the door and start sprinting into zombie. Now it's dead, press back backspace to drop the weapon. And after we open the door, uh, it will start a skippable dialogue, so we'll have to mash spacebar to skip it. Uh, also a little trick, if you a uh, happy owner of controller, uh, you can also mesh uh, keybind for skipping a dialogue on your controller. By default it's a circle on PS4 controller and uh, I think it's B on uh, Xbox layout. So uh, you can mesh at the same time spacebar and B or circle, whatever your controller is, to skip dialogue slightly faster. Let's, let's try it. So we almost instantly skip the dialogue. Uh, now the game starts an unskippable radio call. Uh, basically every radio call is unskippable, but uh, we can skip dialogues by speaking with somebody else. Uh, in this location they have nobody to speak with. To, so we cannot speak this dialogue and we have to wait until it plays out completely. So uh, do not stay AFK uh, while this dialogue is playing, uh, we can do something useful. We will pick up two duct tapes which will be required for duping later on and we will open door which is just uh, staying as an obstacle for us. So as, you, as fast as, as soon as you skip this dialogue, turn around, pick up a duct tape from this table, turn around once more, go outside the room, pick up this duct tape and kick open this door. Then get back to the guy. Dialogue just ends, we can speak with him once again. It will start another skippable dialogue, so use the same trick. Press F, mesh spacebar, if you have controller, press uh, circle as well. Now, we don't have any 
we don't have any unskippable radio calls. We just have to pick up required ingredients to craft a med kit. Uh, so you can you may see that uh, minimap has three highlighted locations. Uh, one of which is here. It's a fake location. There is nothing here. Uh, two ingredients are located in this room and in the room we just kicked open. Uh, you can search them in any order you want. You have to get back anyway, so it's up to your preference. I'm usually searching for this room. Turn instantly to the right and open this uh, worker. Also, a uh, little trick on how to pick up items optimally. Uh, if you just press F and press F second time uh, to pick up item, uh, you have to watch picking up animation with, uh, without the ability to move. So what you can do instead, uh, as soon as I press F to start opening animation, I'll start holding S and D to go back and right, basically in, in, into the direction of this door, and we'll start meshing F. Uh, by doing this, uh, I will pick up an item while still walking, so uh, this animation won't block me for, from moving away. Oh, let's try it. Press F, start holding buttons, my chef, get out of this room. Same thing works here. Press F, start machine F and direction buttons. Also, uh, there is one little trick on how to do it even faster. Uh, as soon as you can see pop up, press F to open, uh, you are not required to stay in front of the fridge or whatever the container is, uh, as soon as you can see it pop up, uh, you can press F and it will teleport you near the fridge or container you're opening. So let's do it. Get away from this room. Now we have all ingredients to craft the med kit. We can see a hint, press F4 to enter blueprints menu. Uh, if you have unbounded prayer menu keybind, well, bad for you, because uh, despite player menu being incredibly scuffed in this game, because each time it opens different tab, it may be quests, it may be items, it may be skills, it may be whatever the game decides to do. In this particular case, uh, when you press player menu, it will always open blueprints menu. So it is a good for menuing. Let's craft a medkit. Press player menu button and we can see a list of recipes available for us. Uh, you might have a different amount of recipes depending on the amount of DLCs you have bought or events you participated in and medkit is always at the bottom of this list which is kind of slow. Luckily for us we can filter our blueprints, press F once, it will filter out all unavailable blueprints so we will have just a medkit always. So uh, the strat is press player menu, press F, press spacebar. Uh, after pressing spacebar, uh, the game will show pop up with progress bar showing crafting process. Uh, we can actually skip it by just quitting the menu. So we press uh, player menu, F to filter, spacebar and escape to cancel the progress bar animation like this. Now we can apply the medkit to this guy and it will start a skippable cutscene which means another black screen movement part which is in particular interesting because at this point uh, game slightly branches out. Uh, I can have two different routes here. Uh, first route includes picking up four duct tapes which will save us one duping cycle if you're uncomfortable with duping, you may go with this strat by picking up four duct tapes. Uh, if you're comfortable with duping, uh, you may use another strat when we pick up only three duct tapes and a tin can. A tin can is used to craft do-it-yourself grenades, uh, which is an RNG part in this strat, so uh, you may be lucky to find requires ingredients to craft grenade, you may be unlucky, so uh, if you're going to south, you will also have to make one more duping cycle and uh, you are relying on luck on completing the strat in the next sections. Uh, if you are unlucky 
is finding ingredients for grenade or if you went for for duct tape strat uh, it's fine uh, you will pick up grenades from bandits it's just slightly slower than uh, crafting them themselves however uh, picking up them from bandits is a safe strat. So the safe strat will be uh, when you skip the cutscene, the game will put you in somewhere like this position. So you can, uh, you have to run slightly forward, turn left, jump over the sink, open yellow box, get back into the room with worker, open this yellow box and get back to the elevator, which is glitched for now. Uh, if you are going with unsafe route, you can just uh, hold W and sprint, turn slightly to the right, but uh, you will start seeing at this point, like uh, the game will fade in completely at about this point, so we can just turn slightly right, open this yellow box, pick a duct tape, open this fridge and pick a tin can, get back to the elevator. So, I will show you the safe strat and we'll pick up a tin can because basically it's almost the same routing but uh, it has consequences in future segments uh, so I want to show everything in this guide. So, press F, skip cutscene, start running forward, turn to the left, pick this scene. Pick this duct tape. Pick a tin. So uh, I picked a tin can and the radio call just end. Uh, because of that, picking up everything is uh, even worse strat. It's safe though. However, uh, you're losing time running from fridge to the elevator. If you are skipping tin can or skipping one duct tape you have enough time to get back and uh, use elevator as soon as it becomes available. So let's use it, it starts an unskippable cutscene but it's a short one so it doesn't even matter. Get back to the room where we spoke with the Rahim. Uh, this door is closed now. So uh, there is basically a two-way how to open the doors. First one is a slow one, which we obviously don't want to use any time in a speedrun. Uh, it's just by pressing F when you are walking. Uh, if you want to open the door fast, you have to open them while sprinting. It will be much faster. I already shown it once on the Sutin 4. Now I am explaining it a little bit in more details. So uh, sometimes when you unlock the doors you you are already staying close to it so there is no way you can sprint towards it so in these cases uh, you can make a couple of steps back uh, look down so you won't have a uh, press F to open pop-up start sprinting and press F like this well it will require some practice but common recipes this one. Those doors are also closed, however, those one will start a skippable cutscene. A skippable cutscene means that another black screen part and during this black screen, car, spar, black screen part we will have to start another dialogue with Rahim, which is a skippable dialogue, so we will start it during the black screen and we will start meshing spacebar instantly. So uh, let's imagine this chair is Rahim we have to speak to him during the black screen. Uh, after skipping first cutscene, the game will put us something like in this location. So we have to go left and slightly turn to the left as well, so we can reach him faster. Instead of doing this thing, uh, we can just turn around and start dialogue with him. After skipping the dialogue, you can just start uh, holding right, so we'll move closer to this door and kick it open. Let's try it. Press F, skip cutscene, go left, turn slightly left, start dialogue, jump to the right, kick open the door. So, it works some, something like this. Then follow the quest. Uh, it might be tempting to use out-of-bounds clip once again. 
relax it won't work because the game has checkpoints somewhere in this doorway so without it you won't be able to interact with player stash so here comes the interesting part uh, first of all the game objective is to put on freshware uh, the game says freshware however it does not require us specifically to put on fresh clothes we can equip whatever skin we want uh, so we will equip whatever is the first skin in the list uh, in the skins menu how do we do it uh, when we open press stash we will press e button to switch tab to closes press spacebar to equip whatever in the first slot and press q to interrupt progress bar pop up just like we interrupted the crafting pro progress bar so let's start it's pretty simple let's do it press f press e press space press q to interrupt it obviously in a speedrun you will do it much quicker but for the guide purposes I did it slightly slower. So now we will do the duping part. Uh, if you're going with Tinken route like I usually do, I prefer to drop it so it won't bother me while, while I'm duping. Uh, then to start duping you have to put one duct tape into the storage. So um, we will trick the game uh, to try withdraw this one duct tape but it will think that we are trying to withdraw three duct tapes which is in our current inventory uh, how do we do it as soon as uh, we'll close this menu like this okay, then I'm... as soon as we press f to open to open it once again uh, we need to press left mouse button and right mouse button at the same time uh, this will open just like this. By the way, I missed the timing, but I will just explain how the sync works. Uh, this will open such pop up with where we can select quantity. Uh, normally, uh, or when we miss the timing, uh, if we press A and D buttons, uh, we will just manip this slider to select how much items we want to store. If we press W and S, nothing happens at all. However, if we press uh, left and right mouse button at the same time as this menu in general shows up, uh, we can suddenly move our selection with our menu buttons. Also, mouse works just fine, but uh, using keyboard is obviously slightly faster. So uh, what we need to do is to move our selection to duct tape by pressing D and then we have to press C to withdraw everything. The game will think that we, we are trying to withdraw three duct tapes, however we just have only one, so this will trick game into duping our duct tapes. We will need uh, somewhere around 8000 of them, so we will repeat the process many times. Put another duct tape, keep the mouse over the duct tape, close menu, open stash, double click, dupe, stash away once again. F. Oh, awesome. Uh, what can happen wrong? What can go wrong? Uh, if you are too early, nothing will open up at all. If you are too late, like I was the first time, something like this, you won't be able to move your selection. So, timing is forgiving, however, it's, it's a thing, so you have to start feeling it, build a muscle memory on duping. So, I will just do 8000 duct tape. So basically, what you have to memorize is pressing F, click mouse, press D, press C, press A, double space, escape. Just like that. Uh, optimally, you won't need to dupe medkits. However, if you are a newcomer or you feel unsafe in running with only one medkit, then potentially two medkits, another one will be given later on in the game. Uh, you may also want to dupe this one as well. The process is all the same. Stash a medkit. Now we have 8000 duct tapes, so we can trick the game into picking up 8000 of medkits. Double click, 
move selection to medkit, press C. Now we have 8,000 medkits as well. So basically, it will be enough for 100 playthroughs. <laughs> I don't know. 8,000 medkits is way more than enough. Pick up the Tinkin and follow the in-game objective like usual. It requires us to go upstairs, so let's go upstairs. We can skip a couple of flights by jumping over the railings and interact with the door. This will start and then skip a walk at scene this time, so we cannot skip it with spacebar. We just have to watch it entirely. Now the game starts, we can start running, jump on this scaffolding and the first and the only hint will show up. We cannot disable this hint unfortunately, so we just have to live with it. As soon as escape to close shows up, we press escape to close it and start climbing to the own. There is a strat however on how to skip this animation, but it's extremely difficult in doesn't have yet a setup for this so and if you fail it you basically waste the time trying it however uh, this branch line on this ventilation shaft actually have a collision so you can actually find a pixel where it slightly elevates you just by small amount of like somewhere here it gives you a little height so you can try jumping on the ventilation, jumping off this branch, and if you hit this pixel, you might skip the animation altogether. However, it's extremely difficult, and you waste time by walking slightly off the route, so it will be just easier to climb casually. Now. The game asks us to fall off the crane. We'll do it, but not entirely. So, uh, jump on the sink, skip first two beams, then uh, there is second set of triple beams, jump over those and fall down from the crane, while still holding W to move slightly forward. This will teleport us back here on the roof, which at the first glance seems unreasonable. We are now further away from our quest. However, what we just did activated a teleport trigger, which is which wraps basically this area. So now we can just jump into this teleport trigger. It's located somewhere near those two radar dishes. dishes. And just jump from the roof and we teleport all the way here. So we skipped walking most part of the crane. Now we have to talk with Rahim. Uh, it will start another skippable cutscene, which will skip by pressing spacebar, uh, which means another black screen part. Uh, game will put us in something like this, or this, I don't know exact angle but uh, after skipping cutscene we can hold W A and shift to fall down however it's slightly tricky because uh, by doing this we can accidentally fall out of bounds and take a fall damage which will lead to see watch an animation of taking damage and also we will have to anyway fall down to progress the game, so we don't want this. We have to be careful in this boxing part. So what I usually do is listen to steps. So like quite reliable to hear. So it, it's easy to separate them from any, every other sound. So what I usually do is hear the steps. As soon as I stop hearing steps, which is usually like two or three steps, I release all the buttons and just enjoy the free fall. So let's do it. Speak, skip cutscene, two steps and fall down. There is another skippable cutscene, a skippable dialogue would be better to say, which can be skipped by machine spacebar. Uh, also if you are quick enough uh, you can see Rahim turning away and running in this direction and then disappearing over here. Uh, if you are fast enough you can actually 
collide with him, which is not what we want. So um, when you fall down, mash spacebar and start running hugging this wall. So you will avoid Rahim while he has a hitbox. He will disappear here anyway, so we can just continue walking like normally. So let's follow the quest. Here comes the first obstacle. Uh, this is the reason why I told and recommended you disabling toggle crouch. Like, uh, because I have toggle crouch disabled now, I can just tap C and skip this obstacle without slowing down. If you have, however, toggle crouch enabled, you won't be able to crouch while sprinting like this. I, I keep mentioning C, but nothing happens at all. So what we'll have to do is to press C and release controls, press C, and then start holding them again, which is slightly more difficult and gives nothing of value. Also, it's pretty easy to f mess up and it might be slightly slower. So just disable toggle crouch and you will be fine. So another important part in this section is stamina management. So I will try to replicate the full route because it's pretty much calculated at this point. Uh, when you are running, obviously you drain stamina and uh, when you are jumping, you drain even more stamina. So uh, we will jump exactly twice once over obstacle and once will be unnecessary to just drain an excess stamina. So we will run out of it at the precise point and then uh, we will walk slowly, just basically something like this uh, while regenerating stamina, which will be just enough for us to do a jump which requires sprinting. So let's say I just skip the dialogue here Start running, skip this obstacle, jump over this one, jump over this crate, which also cuts corner a little bit, jump from this stairs. Now we run out of stamina. Normally uh, we should run out of it somewhere here. Uh, some runners prefer to stay here and use a jump as a visual measurement for the waiting time. I prefer to take slightly suboptimal curve like this so I can rage in my stamina by the time I need to jump. Uh, it's up to you, whatever the approach you like most. And uh, also if you some, for some reason messed up this jump in terms of skipping animation like this, for example you jump somehow too early and you have animation, it's also fine because uh, you're actually re regenerating stamina while climbing, so it might be even better in terms of stamina because you won't have to wait here. So let's say we take this route, we have to make this jump. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, now, instead of doing the tutorial like it's intended to, uh, we will skip basically most part of it by climbing this scaffolding earlier by jumping like this. Uh, sometimes you may actually climb over this bar. It's fine, you will just lose a little bit of time because you will have to climb twice. First of this bar and then on the scaffolding, scaffolding itself. Uh, after climbing here, jump on the right and do the same thing again. Also, uh, this was in particular interesting, uh, if you hit this bar instead of scaffolding, it's fine. Uh, you can still save it with having only one animation if you walk straight forward and keep meshing space. Uh, this will potentially will try to push you on top of the scaffolding. Like this. So, if you miss uh, the climb, it's still fine you won't even lose that much time. And you have to jump over on those crates. This is actually an extremely risky strat. Uh, I can see this little corner. You can try jumping on it and jumping again to skip climbing animation, but it's insanely difficult and risky. So I hit it now, but uh, you may accidentally fall down. It's 
I don't know, it's a strat for TAS or for segmented run, but it might be not viable for a wife any percent run. So, QAM on those crates, QAM is great, make press W once. Uh, then, next part is pretty much interesting because it's extremely timing based, uh, timing is pretty tight, so you have to be fast, you can't allow yourself any unnecessary animations, uh, because there is a potential to softwalk the game if you are slow enough. Uh, also if you have some extra animation you most likely won't be able to do one more animation skip, you will start having a seizures. Uh, which takes like, I don't know, 5 to 7 seconds, maybe. And you can skip this animation by taking a fall damage at the precise timing. So if you are slow enough, you will be in the middle of your crane, so you won't be able to take a fall damage. Uh, so what will happen next? I'll start holding W, uh, holding Shift, Spacebar and meshing Spacebar to start jumping and I'll try to land on this wall. We can see it right now, you'll see it later, but I'll try to land on this wall, jump on the crane, climb up with, while trying to skip animations. Uh, I'll jump on the railing and jump off it to skip the animation, which is uh, kind of tricky jump, but with practice you can do it easily. And then uh, run on the crane and as soon as Rahim says the word prodigy, or prodigy in English, uh, you can jump down and take the fall damage. So I will try, I will try to do it quickly. How it's supposed to be done in a speed run. Here comes the railing. Jump on it. Jump on this thing to skip animation. Run on the crane. And now Rahim should say Pradish. We start having seizure, but because we were in the middle of uh, hurt animation, we skipped it entirely. So now just walk slowly, cut corners, make your way back into the tower, and Rahim will show up out of thin air. If you mess something up, sometimes uh, Rahim may not spawn at all, which means you, you've softwalked the game and you have to quit out and restart it. This will put you way back to the crane, you have to climb it over, all over again, run all the way through the crane, all the way here, which is an insane time loss, so you might as well just reset this, the run and restart all the thing. So, Speaking with him, we'll start a skippable dialogue, so we'll mesh spacebar with controller. And after that, we have to go to the elevator. We won't do it because we are lazy, we will just quit out to the main menu. And mesh space to press continue. This will put us right near the elevator, so we are skipping going two floors down or three in. Interact with elevator, and we've, we are done with tutorial. Parfait. Ils m'ont donné un vrai boulot, et personne ne se doute de ma véritable identité. Pour l'instant, tout se passe bien. Une fois que le docteur Zirey m'aura aidé à me débarrasser. Press spacebar to continue. There is no blocking movement available because you have this animation. Turn left immediately. Run towards the quartermaster. Start speaking with him. It will launch another skippable dialogue. Also, Quartermaster requires you to pick at least one item. Uh, luckily, first item in his list, unless you have dockets. I'm not having them, I'm getting rid of all dockets, dockets before starting run, just for this reason. So, uh, you can just press spacebar to pick first slot, which is weapon. And it's good for us, we don't have any weapon now, we need it. Uh, and continue with game quest. It opens, uh, quarter muscle menu opens automatically, press spacebar again to pick wrench, or it, it can be pipe, whatever, weapons have same stats, so it doesn't even matter. 
RNG is not a factor in this. Uh, these things are always the same. So if you are not duping medkits, you might want to take this medkit if you like. It will give you one extra chance to, chance to heal. I'm usually skipping it also because it takes some time. Press escape and follow the objective. This cutscene is unskippable, so we just sit back and enjoy. After this cutscene, we will start. We can start already holding Shift and W and start turning left. Follow the objective. Uh, here we can uh, skip taking full damage by falling on this railing, like this. Then jump on this van, jump here, try to skip animation. I am usually tend to wait for just a short period of time to jump and skip animation more consistently because uh, sometimes when it Especially if you mesh spacebar, you will notice that I am flying over this place and I may end up far enough or my input will be eaten, so sometimes you might just miss it. So it's better to jump on the hood, stand for, for a short amount of time and jump here. Then Interact with the door as a quest requires you. You will knock the door, you have to interact once again. It will start a skippable cutscene, which means another blacked in movement part. Uh, the game will turn around you like this. You want to jump over this fence, so there is a different ways to do it. Uh, what I prefer is to start running, then at this point turn left and jump here, jump over the fence. Uh, some runners just run forward. Uh, grab this pole and jump over the fence. It's more or less take the same time. Uh, it's just for me personally. Sometimes I accidentally take a full damage here, so it, it's kind of bad that I jump down. I need to get back into the safe zone. Uh, so what I'm usually do is I'm listening to the steps. As soon as uh, basically there is one step sound, and on this thing there is you can hear wooden steps. So as soon as I hear wooden step, I turn left and jump. This is what I try usually to do. But uh, you do as you like. You might want to follow this strat because it's slightly easier. You just have to run forward jump and jump. You don't have to turn around during the black screen. So let's do it. Interact. Press space. Step sound changed. I'm jumping left. Then uh, you want to pick up those two herbs. Uh, if you're unlucky there might be only one. It's fine. Uh, if there is only one pick it up. Uh, you just can dupe it later. If there is two it's amazing you won't have to dupe them. You need exactly two herbs. Then, after picking them up, turn right, run towards this rock, and pick one toxic lichen. You can pick it up while running, like this, without stopping. So, basically, the same trick which is used uh, during 13 4 mission when we walk and trigger the pickup animation. Same thing as the is here, just we are running towards it, picking it up and continue our route. You will need only one Toxic Lycan because, uh, well, basically you need four of them, but it's completely RNG how many Toxic Lycans you can get. Sometimes you can get extremely unlucky and you'll get none of them. Well, that's most likely a reset, however, if you want to practice and you're a newcomer, there is three toxic lichens over there reliably and there are a couple of toxic lichens I believe on this rock. There, at least one of, of it uh, gets spawned here reliably. Now it's two of them but at least one of them here 
it's almost guaranteed. Guaranteed. The problem is uh, with these toxic lichen spawns, a random amount of them get spawned inside the rock, which is inaccessible for you. Like now, it's four of them spawned inside the rock. It might be. It's extremely, extremely uh, unusual to spawn everything inside rock, but you know. Once in a full moon, it might happen. So, run forward, pick it up, jump once here in the water, keep running. Uh, I usually don't, uh, not jump in here because uh, it will drain stamina. And uh, with my strat, which you can look up in in my actual run, I I'm not jumping, and I'm usually having just enough stamina to make a jump over here into this pond. Then press F to open this crate and you have to pick up relief package from this supply drop which is located always to the left. Uh, as soon as you pick it up you have to quit out to the main menu and it will end the first uh, the awakening mission. Actually first assignment has already started however uh, its uh, awakening quest ends as soon as radio dialogue ends but uh, usually you pick this uh, relief package right at the time the dialogue ends. So, uh, how do you, how do you know when to quit out? As soon as model of this relief package disappears, you can quit out like this. So, this was an end of the first mission, awakening. Uh, in next video, we'll cover the second mission called first assignment. In this part we will get max amount of levels, we will get our grappling hook and our speed potions. So I will see you in the next video.